So, this week we have been discussing more advanced concept of capacitor. We introduced dielectric inside the capacitor and till now we have calculated how to find out capacitance in a different situation. And the last class I started the force that dielectric experiences when it is kept partially inside the capacitor, right. So, uh, we will continue that. So, as I told you that uh, there are two situations. one where we are placing dielectric inside capacitor and cell remain connected and the another one where we place the dielectric inside capacitor and battery is removed right. So, when battery remains connected the force dielectric experiences the force it experiences is given by plus du by dx. So, x part of the dielectric is inside and this is the way we can calculate force. So, we will calculate energy stored inside capacitor at this moment and we will differentiate that with respect to x, we will get the force right. So, potential energy as we know when battery remains connected we can write half C V square. Right. So, potential is constant. That means, when I am differentiating uh, u with respect to x, I need to differentiate c with respect to x, right. So, let us first get c in terms of x. Let the width of the plate is b. So, this is b. It is something like this. So, let this be b and this total length is l. So, this is l. So, we can see that there are there are two capacitors one having dielectric and another one without dielectric and these two are connected in parallel combination because first terminal of this one and first terminal of capacitor with dielectric they are connected and second terminal of this air capacitor and second terminal of capacitor with dielectric they are connected. So, I can see these two are in parallel combination. I can write the capacitance of this part. So, formula is epsilon naught A by D into K where K is the dielectric constant of the material we are using. So, dielectric constant of material is K. So, C 1 I can write C 1 this so, this distance is L minus A. So, this distance is L minus A and this is B, this area. This area will be B into L minus X epsilon naught by D, right. Here, this distance is X, this is B. So, area will be B into X, B into X, K times epsilon naught A by D. This is C1 plus C2. If I add these two because parallel combination I need to apply formula C is equal to C 1 plus C 2. So, C is equal to C 1 plus C 2 right. So, substituting this value I will get C is equal to substitute C 1 here and C 2 here you will get this one. Now, as you can see C we are getting as a function of x and to get force I need to differentiate. I need to differentiate energy which is in the form of capacitance. So, if I differentiate this u with respect to x. So, this can be written du is equal to differentiate this term. So, differentiating this term will give me du is equal to half v is constant v square I can take out dc right. Divide dx this side and divide dx this side that means I require dc by dx here that I can substitute. When I differentiate c with respect to x this is a constant term which will become 0 and x to the power 1 differentiation will be 1. So, epsilon naught b by d k minus 1 will come here after differentiation with respect to x ok. So, this is dc. So, dc by dx I can substitute over here. So, after substituting I am getting force du by dx is epsilon naught b 
by 2 d k minus 1 v square and this expression is independent of x. So, irrespective of the location of the dielectric as long as it is inside the gap this expression is independent of x. So, force experienced by dielectric is coming independent of x that means it is coming constant right. This formula is meant only when it is partially filling the gap between the plate. If it is completely inside we have seen in the last class that the force coming from this side due to fringe effect and force coming from this side due to fringe effect they will cancel each other right. So, if it is partially filled partially filled this way right some part is inside and some part is outside then the force experience when battery remain connected is independent of x that means it is a constant force right. Now, let us talk about the second condition or second situation when we charge the capacitor and after charging capacitor we remove the battery and we place dielectric this way then how much force dielectric will experience. So, again the procedure is same let us see next one. So, this is the situation we already have a charge capacitor and the force this dielectric experiences towards the gap that can be found using F is equal to minus du by dx I already to, told at constant charge we have formula minus du by dx where as here charge is constant charge given to this plate is say plus q and charge given to this plate is minus q as charge is constant there is no other source which can provide charge to the system then here I can use formula for u u I can write half q square by c right. So, in previous case as potential was constant I apply v square by sorry half c v square in this case as charge is constant we are applying half q square by c right. So, again I need to differentiate this function where charge is constant and capacitor capacitance is varying according to x. So, ultimately I need to differentiate 1 upon c we have to differentiate 1 upon c. So, for that I need to write capacitance first right. So, capacitance we have already seen previous case these two are connected in parallel I can write capacitance this way right we have just seen this is the capacitance right. So, to get force I need to differentiate energy, energy is stored inside capacitor and that is coming in the form of capacitance and capacitance is coming in the form of x right. So, let us start. So, u is equal to half q square by c and du is equal to if I substitute the value of capacitance over here and differentiate this one right. So, you can see epsilon naught b in bracket l plus x this term will come in denominator if I just substitute the value half q square divided by c epsilon naught b and this whole expression l plus x k minus 1 and this d will go to numerator this is what we are getting and now we need to differentiate u with respect to x and put minus sign. So, differentiating this term this is 1 upon x format differentiation will give you 1 upon x square format right with minus sign. So, this minus or that minus will make it plus and here you will get this whole term whole square and whatever coming with x that will come in front. So, k minus 1 I can see here right. So, minus of du by dx is force. So, if I simplify get du by dx and put minus sign then I am getting force this one q square 
whatever the charge given to, to the capacitor d k minus 1 upon 2 epsilon naught b in bracket 1 upon l plus x k minus 1 whole square right as you can see in this case that the force dielectric experiences towards the gap force dielectric experiences towards the gap that is a function of x so it is a function of x depends on x so force depends on location of dielectric again we should not apply this formula when it is completely occupying the space in between two plates right so again the same logic the fringe effect coming from this side and fringe effect coming from this side they will cancel each other so you will get force zero right so this formula is meant when x is not equal to l right so i hope this concept is also clear so two situations we have discussed first one when potential was constant second one when charge was constant and we have seen that in both the cases forces coming on dielectric is independent of first case it is independent of x and second case it depends on x right now let's see one example <coughs> so between two plates of capacitor a dielectric is placed which is partially occupying the space between two capacitor two plates and on other side it is held it is holding a block of mass m right the question is calculate the value of m for which dielectric slab stay in equilibrium so what should be the value of this m so that this dielectric slab will be in equilibrium right so width of the plate we need that is given as b and we have seen that force force was epsilon naught k minus 1 b k minus 1 v square divided by 2d this was the force experienced by dielectric towards the gap so this much force it will experience right and on other side because of string it will experience pull force this way and block if i draw free body diagram tension pull force upward and mg downward so what i can write for this one if it is in equilibrium t is equal to mg and for slab i can write f is equal to t that means from these two equation i can write f is equal to mg so electrostatic force that is experienced by dielectric must be equal to mg if it is in equilibrium right so i can substitute value of mg over here so mg is equal to epsilon naught b k minus 1 v square divided by 2 d question is what is the value of m so value of m epsilon naught b k minus 1 v square divided by 2d g so if this is the mass of the block the slab will remain in equilibrium so this all we have learned in newton's law the only new thing we learn in this chapter that when slab is placed this way it experiences force towards the gap as potential is constant as it remains connected across the source force is given by this formula that i am using right similarly it might be a situation where charge is given to the plates and you are asked to find out what should be the mass 
in that case as we have seen force depends on the location of the slab inside I require how much it is inside. So, I will substitute the value of x and simplify I will get the value of m. So, instead of using this formula we will use another formula what we have derived when charge is constant. So, I hope this whole concept is clear. Let us see one more example. So, there are two semicircular plates, there are two semicircular plates and a semicircular dielectric slab is kept inside. So, visualize one semicircular plate here, another semicircular plate here and the slab is in between two plates. So, something like this. So, there is another plate which is which will be something like this right and here when you see it will appear this way. So, this is the situation, there are two semicircular plate radius say r. So, radius of this slab is also r. So, two plates, two plates you can see and uh, in between the slab we have got dielectric of dielectric constant k. So, we have dielectric constant k here. Now, the question is find the magnitude of moment of the force on the dielectric about O. This is O, right. And some part is outside, if we can assume this something, let this angle be phi, right. So, if this angle is phi, this angle, they, that will be phi and this angle, this angle will be pi minus phi. And it is given in the question that these two are uh, or cell remains connected. So, two are connected with cell. So, upper one and lower one connected with the cell like this. Question is how much torque it will experience, right. So, it will try to go inside the plate this way, right rotating in anti clockwise sense it will try to occupy this space so this will go this way right here you can say see, see that this will go this way it will rotate about this axis inward so question is what is the torque it experiences the magnitude of moment of the force that is nothing but torque how much torque it will experience right to write torque We know uh, that work done by field will change the energy of the system, right? And 
for writing force so we can write plus du by dx for constant v for writing torque I can use du by d phi plus at constant v. So, in this situation as we need to find out torque I will get energy as a function of phi and when I differentiate energy with respect to phi I will get the torque right. So, previous case there was translation in this case as it is held here, it is held here, so this whole thing, so two plates are fixed and about this axis, this dielectric is free to rotate. So, as in this case we have rotation, we are using this formula, right. So, translation we have discussed, now we are talking about the rotation. Right. So, how much torque it will experience that we can find out. So, for that I need to find out phi sorry energy as a function of phi and this I can write energy I can write as battery remains connected I can write half C V square. u will be the function of c and c will be the function of phi that I will write here differentiate with respect to phi I will get the torque this is the approach right. So, let us first write c. So, again you can see two capacitors one where there is air you can visualize this part and another one another capacitor is here this plate and back one they are forming one capacitance and the space in between them is occupied by this part of the dielectric right. So, there are two capacitors one filled with air another filled with dielectric and they are connected in parallel combination. So, I will write the capacitance of first one I will write the capacitance of second one and I add like what we have just done. So, C 1 plus C 2. So, C is equal to C 1 plus C 2, C 1 plus C 2 I am applying, C 1 is what? Epsilon naught here again I can because this gap is very small I can apply the formula that the gap between them is this gap is D or thickness of this dielectric is D right. I hope you are able to understand this is top view this one is top view and this one is side view right. So, if I ask how much is the capacitance of this part epsilon naught A by D I can use because plates are quite large as compared to the gap between them. So, this system will behave as almost like parallel plate system. So, epsilon naught area area of this one if this angle is phi and radius of this one is r, radius of plate is r, then I can write phi r square by 2 area divided by separation epsilon naught a by d formula I am using plus capacitance of this part, capacitance of this part k epsilon naught this angle is now pi minus phi right into r square divided by 2d. So, I can further simplify and we can write it this way c is equal to. So, r square by 2 d epsilon naught I can take out r square divided by 2 d epsilon naught I have taken out right. So, I can see 1 phi here and I can see k pi and another phi right. So, 
this phi and this phi I will write separately. So, 1 k pi constant term I have written here and then k is coming with minus sign. So, I will write minus k this term right. So, here I have taken minus out. So, k minus 1 into phi right this is what we are getting now we need to substitute this value over here and we can find out torque so substituting this value here u is equal to so i'll erase all this F or in this case we are calculating torque, so I will add torque torque is equal to du by d phi right du by d phi is equal to u is equal to half c v square right. So, d by d phi of half c v square this I can further simplify v is constant 1 by 2 is constant right. So, v square by 2 I have taken out that means what I need to do d c by d phi I need to substitute in the expression. So, if I differentiate this one differentiate this one what I am going to get now I will erase this part I will substitute the value of c over here and simplify the expression to get the value of torque right. So, v square by 2 torque into d c by d phi. Now, epsilon naught r square by 2 first term is constant that will become 0, it will go inside and this will become 1 right. So, what I can see is epsilon naught r square divided by 2 d divided by 2 d k minus 1 right nothing is left nothing is left if you differentiate this one first term will become 0 second term we are differentiating with respect to phi only only k minus 1 will come k minus 1 is coming this is what we are getting the magnitude of torque is this right. So, phi is increasing in this direction slab is experiencing force opposite to that that is why we are getting this minus sign right. So, as you can see this minus will come here minus will come here as I have considered the phi this way right. So, this is the direction of this is the way phi is increasing. So, d phi positive will be in this direction and you are getting this value negative that means opposite to the direction of increment of phi that means towards the gap. So, this slab will experience torque towards the gap this way right and the magnitude of that is given by v square upon 2 into epsilon naught r square d right. So, if I give you moment of inertia or I give you mass of this disc you can find out the moment of inertia if you have moment of inertia then you can calculate the value of angular acceleration substituting moment of inertia here torque you already have you will be getting angular acceleration. Once you have angular acceleration you can find out velocity after time t 
angular velocity after time t and you can relate all these variables, right. So this is something we have discussed in rotation, right. So in this chapter, we are just focusing only on the, on this part, what extra force, what extra torque dielectric experiences and how to use it, we already learned in Newton's law in our 11th standard. So I hope this whole concept is clear. Now let us move to next topic. So dielectric is covered completely. While solving circuit, first thing what we see is if there are any series or parallel combination in the circuit. So if there is any series or parallel combination, we will try to reduce the circuit by using series parallel formula, right. Sometime what happened, we have seen the problems also. Directly we are unable to see series parallel combination, but a conducting wire is given. So using the concept of the conducting wire, what we have discussed, we can reduce the circuit further, right. So first thing we need to see is series parallel combination. If we are not getting series parallel combination, then we, co we can go for conducting wire. If there is any conducting wire, we can solve or simplify the problem using conducting wire. If series parallel combination is not there, conducting wire is not there, then we go for Wheatstone bridge, right. This is the approach by which we solve a given circuit. So if circuit is simple, then you can directly or straight away apply Kirchhoff's law and you can simplify the whole circuit and you can find out the parameter asked. But sometimes circuit is not that simple. So in those cases, what approach we need to follow, I am telling you that. So first series parallel combination, first step, we will check that. If we get series parallel combination, we apply those formula and we can simplify the circuit. Series parallel combination directly we are unable to see, but there is a conducting wire, then you can replace two point of conducting wire by a single point and you can reduce the circuit and then you start seeing series parallel combination. But if a straight wire is also not there, then we have to check whether circuit is in the Wheatstone bridge form or not. What is Wheatstone bridge and what is the balance condition that we will see? See, Wheatstone bridge. So, if arrangement is something like this, two capacitors connected this way, and these two capacitors, and this junction is connected to this junction by a capacitor. Now, as you can see, there is no series parallel combination in the circuit at this moment, right? this one and this one, they can come in series combination only when there is no division of charge here. So if charge is not entering into this one, then I can say these two are in series combination. This when happens, the whole circuit is called balanced Wheatstone bridge. In balanced condition, there is no charge stored in C5. That means there should not be any charge entering into this capacitor, C5 cap capacitor, right. So whatever comes here, whatever comes here, that completely goes into this branch. There is no division of charge here. And if there is no division of charge here, there is no role of this capacitor, I can remove this capacitor as soon as I remove this capacitor, you can see that these two will come in series combination, these two will be in series combination then they will become parallel combination. Now you can easily solve the circuit. So steps you need to follow, first I saw there was no series parallel combination, right. 
there was no conducting wire connected between two junctions. So, I cannot apply second concept also. Now, I am checking for Wheatstone bridge. So, this arrangement is called Wheatstone arrangement and it is said to be in balanced state when there is no charge flowing through this capacitor. Right? Now, what is the condition for that to happen that we want to figure out? So, what should be the values of all this or what should be the relation between all this so that there should not be any flow of charge through this capacitor, right? This condition we need to find out. I hope point is clear and if we get that condition, we can easily say these two are in series, these two are in series, then parallel we can reduce the circuit, we can easily solve the circuit, right? So, this is the third step we need to follow, two steps we already discussed, now we are discussing Wheatstone bridge. What should be the condition for that to happen? whatever charge flowing through C1, if it completely goes through C3, then only there won't be any charge on C5. Simple logic, right? If there is no charge flowing through this capacitor, that means potential at X must be equal to potential at Y. So, I can write potential at X must be equal to potential at y because charge flows due to potential difference. If there is no potential difference, there won't be any flow of charge. It's difficult to find the value of the potential in the circuit unless until potential of one terminal is given. So we cannot calculate the value of potential x and potential y, but we can calculate the potential difference. So, look at this part, this potential difference and this potential difference I can easily calculate. So, the common term is A. So, what I can do? I can subtract A from both sides. V A minus that means, if this is true, this has to be true, V A minus V X must be equal to V A minus V Y. Okay. Now, what is Va minus Vx, Va minus Vx and what is Va minus Vy? So, to calculate that, I can connect V volt battery here, right? So, I just connected V volt battery and now I will check. If there is no charge flowing through this capacitor, there is no use of this capacitor. If there is no use of this capacitor, I can redraw circuit this way. Now, look at this one. This is C1, C3, C2 and the last one is C4. If this is the situation as you can see that this whole branch and this branch and source they all are connected in parallel combination. So, these two they are connected in series combination I can apply voltage division formula to get the potential across this capacitor. Using that formula, I can calculate the potential difference across this capacitor and the potential difference across this capacitor I will keep here and the potential difference across this capacitor I will keep here, right? What is the potential division formula? 
if two capacitors are connected in series, they will have the same charge. We have already seen that. Q is equal to CV, right? Two capacitors connected in series, then they will have the same charge. If they have the same charge, the voltage appearing will be inversely proportional to capacitance. So, voltage appearing across this capacitor depends on this capacitor and voltage across this capacitor depends on this capacitance, right. So, voltage drop across this capacitor I can directly write V C3 divided by C1 plus C3 voltage division formula. Similarly, I can write the potential difference here A Va minus Vy potential difference here. So, potential difference here divide voltage in these two capacitor right voltage division formula. So, voltage coming across this one C4 divided by C2 plus C4 right. Now, analysis over I will erase this one. I will simplify the expression. So, V and V getting cancel out. Here I can see if I inverse it, then this will become 1 plus C1 by 1 plus C1 by C3. And on other side, similarly, I will get C2 1 plus C2 by C4 here 1 1 will get cancelled out we are getting c1 upon c3 is equal to c2 upon c4 c1 upon c1 upon c3 if this one upon this one is equal to this one upon this one then our wheatstone bridge is called in balance state right this can also be written as c1 upon c2 is equal to c3 upon c4 right so, this one upon this one is equal to this one upon this one, then also it can be called a balanced Wheatstone bridge, right. So, if this condition is met, there is no flow of charge through C5, as there is no flow of charge through C5, I can remove C5, as I remove C5, these two capacitor will now be in series, these two will be in series and then these two branches will be in parallel combination, I can simplify the circuit, right. So, this way I can reduce the circuit, this is the third method what we are discussing. So, in any such situation you have to see whether our wheat stone bridge is in balanced condition or not. When it is not in balanced condition, what to do? That we will see later, but for time being what if it is in balanced state, then what? can be done, we are talking about that, right. So, I hope the condition for balanced Wheatstone bridge is clear and what benefit we get when Wheatstone bridge is balanced that is also clear, right. So, maximum time circuit will not be given in this simple diagram, there might be some complication in diagram itself. If you closely look at the circuit, then you will realize that the circuit is in balanced state or not. Okay, let us see some example, then it will be clear. So, this way we can easily see if this one upon this one, if this is C1 and this is C2, and this is C3 and this is C4, and this is C5, right. So, I can see if, if C1 upon C2 is equal to C3 upon C4, it is balance Wheatstone bridge, right. Sometime instead of giving this way, circuit might be given this way, right. So, this capacitor is placed outside and the battery is connected here, right. So, battery is inside and capacitor is outside. Again, the same situation, right. If this one upon this one, C1, C2, C3, C4 and this one is C5, if C1 upon C2 is equal to C3 upon C4, then 
I can remove this capacitor. Similarly, here if this condition is met, I can remove this capacitor. When I remove this capacitor, then I can see these two are in series, these two are in series, then they will be in parallel combination, right. So, circuit will not always be given in the figure, in the form of figure what you have just seen. So, there might be little complication, right, this way you have to check. So, similarly it might be given this way, right, in the form of circle and there is one capacitor connected. This is another way of drawing, right. So, again if C1 upon C2 is equal to C3 upon C4, then it is called in balance state and you can remove this capacitor and you can simplify the circuit, right. There is one more way of drawing it, let us see that. So, I will take one more example. look at this one, right. So, there are 5 capacitors and if it is in balanced condition, then this C1, C2, this is say C3 and C4, let this be C5. What we can do, we can redraw the circuit First we will redraw the circuit so that we will be having idea whether it is in the same form or not. So, I will name the terminal, let this be A, this be B and let this be C and this be D. So, in Wheatstone bridge as we have seen, we have just seen, there will be 4 terminals like this, A, B, C, D and then I start connecting capacitor, between A and C I can see this C2. So, between A and C, C2 is there, right. And between A and D, C1 is there, A and D, C1 is there. C and B, C and B, C4 I can see, C and B, C4 I can see. and between D and B, C3 is there, D and B, C3 is there, C3. Then our last one, between C and D, C5 is there. C5, right. Now you can see that this is the same what we have drawn for the Wheatstone bridge. So, when you are unable to visualize directly, you can just draw 4 points, 4 points this way and start connecting the capacitor and if C1 upon C2 is equal to C3 upon C4, then you can remove the middle one. So, in this diagram, I can remove the middle one. So, if it is, if C1 upon C2 is equal to C3 upon C4, there will not be any charge flowing through this C5, I can remove C5 and when I remove C5, I can see C5 is removed, I can see these two are in series, these two are in series and then they are in parallel, right. So, whole concept is clear. Now, let us see one example based on this concept. So, find the equivalent capacitance between A and B. Between A and B, what would be the equivalent capacitance? So, you can try drawing the or redrawing the diagram to check whether it is in the same form of Wheatstone bridge or not and which capacitor won't be working, right. So, which capacitor should be removed. Now, so, as I already told you the procedure, this is A, B 
let this be C and this be D. I'll draw four points. A, B, C, D. Right. Now I start connecting capacitor. Between A, C, we have 6C. Between A, D, we have 3C. Between C, B, we have 12C. Between B, D, I have 6C. So, four capacitor we have already connected. Now, between C and D, between C and D, we have got 2C. So, 2C here. Now, we have to check whether it is in balance condition or not. This one upon this one must match with this one upon this one. As you can see, 6C, 6C divided by 3C, which is equal to 2, is matching with 12C divided by 6C, that is also 2. So, this is in balance condition. If it is in balance condition, then I can draw diagram this way. 6C, 12C, I will remove this 2C, now there is no use of this 2C, I am drawing the remaining capacitors. So, this one is 3C and 6C. Now, Earlier you can see there was no direct series and parallel combination what we can figure out. Now after using the concept of heat stone bridge we came to know that there is no role of this 2C and we removed 2C and we got a simplified circuit where these two are in series combination, these two are in series combination. 6C into 12C, these two are in series combination formula is C1, C2 upon C1 plus C2. So this upper branch. will have capacitance 6C into 12C divided by 6C plus 12C, right. So, this is the capacitance of upper one, let us call it Cu, right. And here I can see 18, I can see 3, 3, 3, 4C. So, upper branch will have capacitance 4C. Now, lower branch, lower branch 3C into 6C divided by 3C plus 6C, 9, <coughs> 3 divided by 9 will give you 3 and 6 by 3 will give you 2C. So, for this whole branch, whole branch capacitance is coming 2C. So, now you can see 4C and 2C, they are in parallel combination. As they are in parallel combination, parallel combination, I can directly add capacitance. So, equivalent capacitance of this whole arrangement is 4C plus 2C that is 6C. So, in a very big circuit some part might be simplified using series parallel combination, some part of the circuit might be solved easily using the conducting wire concept, some part might be solved using Wheatstone bridge concept. If circuit is very big, you can break the problem into parts and after applying all these concepts, you can reduce the circuit, right. So, this is another tool of reducing the circuit, right. So, series parallel over, conducting wire over, Wheatstone bridge over, right. Now, we will see the next technique of reducing the circuit. If circuit contains a particular way of symmetry, using simple voltage division and current division, we can reduce the circuit, 
right so what are those technique we will see so first we will understand what is circuit symmetry so let's see circuit symmetry so basically there are two concept of circuit symmetry one is input output symmetry and another is folding symmetry so input output symmetry means whatever we see circuit from input side if the same circuit we see from output side then the circuit will have input output symmetry right if circuit is having input output symmetry the way current enters into the circuit must be same as the the way current leaves the circuit right this is the logic so let's first see one simple example so that you will understand the meaning of input output symmetry right so we will use the concept of symmetry to reduce the circuit right so input output symmetry look at this circuit look at this circuit as you can see whatever we are seeing from input side if all are having capacitance c okay so they all are having capacitance c c c this one is c c i am first making it very simple so that you can understand the concept first okay now from input side if i connect battery this way see we have connected battery this way right now whatever i am seeing from this side same thing i see i or i observe from this side right here i see one capacitor connected this way another capacitor connected this way then it is connected with this branch and if i go from here then i'll see the same situation right so this side whatever i was getting i am getting the same thing when i go by this way now those who are not understanding for them if i make assume that if i make this capacitor 2c now look at the situation this side i'll see this capacitor and this capacitor both are having capacitance c when i try to enter into the circuit from this side then first capacitor i face is 2c and then the c that means whatever we are seeing from input side we are not seeing from output side the circuit is not having input output symmetry right so if i make it c then this side and this side or this way or this way circuit is same circuit is having input output symmetry right similarly i can make change here now you can easily see that from here when i enter into the circuit i'll see this capacitor having capacitance c while from here when i try to enter the first capacitor i see here is 2c that means the way i am getting circuit from this side is not the same the way i am getting circuit from this side circuit is not having input output symmetry right so if i make this one as 2c circuit is having input output symmetry or not if the upper one is made 2c then circuit is having input output symmetry or not now from this side you see 2c at the top and when you are coming from this side again you will see 2c at the top circuit is having input output symmetry so circuit is holding input output symmetry so i hope you understood the meaning of input output symmetry now how we use this symmetry to solve circuit that is the most important thing so i want to use concept of input output symmetry 
to reduce the circuit. As you can see directly I cannot visualize or I cannot figure out which two capacitors are in series and which two are in parallel. So, I cannot reduce the circuit. So, series parallel is directly not applicable. There is no conducting wire which is joining two junction. So, that second one is also not possible. I cannot see Wheatstone bridge also, right. So, Wheatstone bridge is also not possible. So, the last one I am seeing the symmetry and how symmetry will help us, let us see. If current delivered by this one is I, the current that enters here must be I. Here when current reaches, it gets two paths, right. So, current here is I say I 1 and current here become I 2, right. And as circuit is having input output symmetry, this branch must deliver back I 2 and this must deliver I 1 so that I 1 plus I 2 again become I and the same current enters into the battery, right. So, as circuit is having input output symmetry, this current and this current must be same and this current and this current must be same because whatever branch we have here at input like this, same branch is this one when we are trying to enter from this side, right. Similarly, this branch is same as this branch when we try to enter from this side, right. Now, what the benefit we are getting? If this is I2, if this current is I2 and this current is I2, that means this current this current matches with this current only when there is no division of current here. At junction, if there is no division of current, then only this current must be equal to this current, right. Because if current enters here and current, some part of the current goes in this part of the circuit, then this current will not match with this current, right. So, for this one to be equal to this one, there should not be any division. As there is no division, I can say this upper part and this branch, they are physically in contact, but they are electrically not in contact. That means, they are not exchanging current, they are not exchanging charge. As they are not exchanging current and charge, I can open this one, I can open this one and redraw the circuit. Let us see. So, I hope now you understood, I will remove this part, I will draw a simplified circuit. So, I can make it this way, one capacitor here, another capacitor here and this one. So, I just opened the junction as current is not having any division at this junction, they are just connected, but they are not exchanging charge or current. So, I just open this part. As soon as I open, I can see that now these two are in series, these two are in series, this series is in parallel with this capacitor, then all these are in series, I can easily simplify the circuit. So, by just a simple 
concept of symmetry, I can easily simplify this complicated circuit and I start seeing all series parallel combination. Now, let us reduce this upper one, upper one these two are connected in series right. So, C by 2, C by 2 and then this C in parallel combination. So, here this C by 2, C by 2 C series combination and C in an is in they are in parallel combination. So, C plus C by 2 will give you 3 C by 2. So, I am directly drawing the whole this whole branch right. So, focus on this branch these two are in series combination. So, capacitance will become C by 2 and then they are in parallel C by 2 plus C that is 3 C by 2 right. Now, this is C and this one is C. So, I can connect this capacitor over here this way, this one is C, this capacitor, this whole branch and this capacitor they are in series and then I can see this one in series that is C by 2. So, this one is C by 2. Now, I can just add these two, I will get the C by 2, C and C, they are in series combination, I can make it C by 2. So, I will further simplify the circuit. And I will make it C by 2. Now, this C by 2 and 3 C by 2 they are connected in series. So, C 1 C 2 upon C 1 plus C 2 I need to apply right. So, C by 2 into 3 C by 2 divided by C by 2 plus 3 C by 2 will be the capacitance of this upper branch. So, let us simplify. So, here I am getting this as 3 C by 4, 3 C by 4. Here I can see this will become 4 C by 2 that is 2 C. By here 2 and 2 will make it 4 and 3 C, 3 C by 4 I will get as numerator. Now in denominator C by 2 plus 3 C by 2 will make it 4 C by 2, 4 C by 2 will be 2 C. So, 3 C by 8 this is C square right. So, 3 C by 8 I am getting here for this branch and C by 2 I am getting for this branch. So, again I will simplify it over here only. So, this upper one I will erase because I reduced it, it is coming 3 C by 8. So, I will place 3 C by 8 capacitor here. Now, you can see that there are two capacitor, they are connected in parallel combination. I can write C equivalent as 3 C by 8 plus C by 2, right. And if you multiply divide by 4, then it will become here, it will become 7 C by 8, 7 C by 8. So, the equivalent capacitance we are getting. This is the benefit of input output symmetry. We solve the whole problem using input output symmetry, right? Whatever we are seeing from this side 
and what we saw from this side, they both same, right. So, input is same as the output, this is called input output symmetry. In input output symmetry, our focus is on division of current. So, how current is getting divided, so that we can check whether there is any junction which can be opened. If junctions can be opened, then obviously the whole circuit will become simple. So, that is the logic we use here while simplifying the circuit and we got 7C by 8, right. This is called input output symmetry. Then we have another type of symmetry which is called folding symmetry, right. What is folding symmetry? So, if about a line, whatever we are getting circuit above it, if you are getting the same circuit below that line, then circuit is called or circuit is having folding symmetry. Battery must be connected across that line, right. So, what does that mean? If I take a, a circuit, for example, if I have taken this circuit and all the capacitance all the capacitors are having capacitance C. Let us first understand this. So, as you can see that circuit is having input output symmetry, whatever I am getting from this side, I am also getting from this side, circuit is having input output symmetry. Here our focus is on folding symmetry. So, as I can see, if I connect the battery, this way, whatever circuit I am getting above this line, same circuit I am getting below this line. So, this is called folding symmetry. So, about this line you can visualize, you are getting mirror image, whatever you are getting above, same you are getting below or you can fold it like this. So, mirror images, right, it is called folding symmetry. Circuit may have more than one symmetry, it may have input output as well as folding symmetry. Like in this situation, circuit is having folding symmetry as well as input output symmetry. With practice, you will come to know by which method you solve the circuit so that you will get the answer in the minimum time, right. So, here let us first understand what is the folding symmetry and what is the application of that previous case in input output symmetry, our focus was on division of current, we divided currents. Here in this situation or in folding symmetry, our focus will be in voltage division, how voltage is getting divided across the circuit, right. So, first let us understand. If I make this one 2C, if I make this one 2C, circuit is having input output symmetry, but circuit is not having folding symmetry, right. Whatever you are getting above this line, you are not getting same thing below this line, right. Above this line and below this line, you are getting two different things. Here we have C capacitance and here we have 2C capacitance, right. If I make this one 2C, then whatever you are getting above, same you are getting below, circuit will have folding symmetry, right. Similarly, I can make some other changes. I can make this one is 2C and this one is C. Now, circuit is not having folding symmetry because above and below, you are getting entirely different circuits. So, circuit is not having folding symmetry, right. So, in folding symmetry, your requirement is whatever you get above the line through which battery is connected, above that line and below the line, same thing. So, now these two are, now this circuit is in folding symmetry.
now also this circuit will be in folding symmetry how voltage will get divided which two junctions will have the same potential that we have to see and we have to redraw the circuit according to that i already told you that if two junctions are at the same potential they can be represented by a single junction so if the circuit is having folding symmetry what i can say is the current flowing here and the current flowing here they must be same because circuit is having folding symmetry right so here this can be written i1 only right so charge flowing through this and charge flowing through this is same as capacitance are also same that means potential difference here and potential difference here has to be same that means the potential of this point and potential of this point will be same whatever way current is flowing here same way current will be flowing here right here i can easily say because this is having input output symmetry also this will be equal to this right now whatever is flowing here same will be flowing here because this is also having folding symmetry and from input output symmetry i am saying this is equal to this one so even if you don't apply the concept of input output symmetry say this is something c here through this capacitor if i assume this is i3 and this is also i3 because this is having folding symmetry whatever is happening above this line of symmetry and same thing is happening below this line of symmetry look at this one capacitance same charge same potential difference will be same that means i can say that potential here will be same as potential here so i can represent these two point by a single point these two point by single point i can reduce the circuit and as i draw the reduced circuit i start seeing what all are in series combination what all are in parallel combination so tomorrow we'll take up this example and we will solve i suggest you to try your, on your own and tomorrow we will discuss that then you can match your answer so i hope you enjoyed today's class Thanks for watching